Welcome to the FPV Crate and Beta FPV Abducted Whoop Build Video. In this video, we're going to help walk you through the process of putting together your new Abducted Whoop and getting you up in the air as safely as possible. Let's go ahead and get into it. Our first step is to attach the motors. Go ahead and remove your four motors from their packaging, set them aside. Make sure that you're working on an open, clean work surface with plenty of light. I would also recommend getting some sort of magnetic work tray that can hold the small screws so that they don't go flying all over the place while you're working. Beta FPV has provided a Phillips head screwdriver if you do not have one in your toolkit. However, I would certainly suggest investing in a decent set of hobby grade tools. Be sure to keep track of all of your screws as you're assembling your quad. You don't want to lose any of these small components. And again, that's why I definitely recommend using a magnetic tray during your build. Kind of like the magnetic tray that you got in March's FPV crate. Be sure to take your time as you are assembling your quad. The last thing you want to do is cross thread any of these very small screws and components. Cross threading one of these motors could really give you a lot of trouble. So be sure you take your time and put all of your screws in slowly. Make sure that they're fully seated and snug them up very well. It does not matter which motor you put in which location. Just make sure as you see here in the video that you have your wires facing towards the center of the quad. That way everything runs straight and proper back towards the flight controller and it makes it much easier to go ahead and plug in your motors as you're assembling your quad. During this build video, you'll see me using a third hand tool. I find that it is an absolute crucial piece of your build kits. It is one of the most important tools that I use almost every single time I'm at the bench. It allows me to free up my hands, hold my components exactly where I need them, and the additional hand will allow you to hold wires in place and free yourself up while you are using solder and your soldering iron. In the next three segments, we're going to go ahead and cover the standard radio receivers that most hobbyists are using and how to attach them to your flight controller. First one we're going to cover is the Spectrum radio receiver. As you can see here, it's a very simple connection. Be sure to double check all of your connections and take your time while you're soldering up these very small components. It's very easy to get solder bridged across two of these pads. This next segment, we're going to go ahead and solder up the wiring harness for an FR Sky receiver.
once again, all of these solder pads are very close together, so it's important that you go slowly and make sure that all of your components are soldered securely without bridging across from one pad to the other. In this last clip, we cover attaching a crossfire radio receiver to your flight controller. Once again, remember to go slowly, make sure that you take your time, and when you're connecting all of these small wires to these very small pads, be sure that they're soldered securely and that there are no bridges from one pad to the other. Now it's time to mount your receiver, your flight controller, your ESC, to your frame. Go ahead and take the little rubber bobbins that are in your hardware kit supplied by Beta FPV and place them on the four corners of your flight controller. This will allow you to slide your flight controller onto the small plastic posts that are on the frame. Figure out how you're going to mount your receiver underneath your flight controller without having it in the way of your USB port. You want to go ahead and figure this out before you start jamming things down there and be sure that you're not crushing any of your components. The slightest connection from one component to the next could cause a short and fry half of your system. So make sure, like you see in this video here, it's often a good idea to go ahead and put some shrink wrap on your radio receiver. That way when it's touching up on the bottom side of your flight controller, you do not run the risk of shorting anything out. Take the flight controller and slide it down onto the posts on the frame like you see here. Be sure that you're not crushing your radio receiver. Make sure that it has a little bit of movement and make sure that it doesn't impede the battery compartment underneath the frame. The next step in the build process is for you to go ahead and attach your radio receiver of choice to the flight controller. Go ahead and remove the flight controller ESC stack from its box in your packaging and go ahead and remove the screws that came with it as well. You'll have two different sets of screws. Each one's have their specific uses. One small bag will have the grommets for attaching the canopy. The other one will have some other small screws for attaching the VTX and the camera into the canopy. In this video, you see me using the gray camera holder, which doesn't exactly put the camera in the right position. I find this out later on in the future and I go back and I remove the gray camera holder and I substitute the white camera holder in its place. This one actually holds the camera in the right orientation and holds it where it's supposed to be.
be sure to go slowly while you're attaching your camera and your VTX into this canopy. You're taking these very small screws and you're screwing them into the plastic canopy. So it's very easy to strip out the screw holes. Go slowly and have a good feel of the tension of your screwdriver to make sure that you don't over tighten the screws and strip out your canopy. If you strip out your canopy, there's a very good chance that your components are going to be loose inside the canopy and they'll be rattle rattling around inside. Make sure that you get two screws into the camera holder and also make sure that you get two screws into the VTX. That will hold both of them very securely in place and it will eliminate a lot of vibration that you might pick up in the camera. Before you attach the canopy, to the frame. Be sure to put the front and rear screws in through the rubber grommets at the front and rear of the flight controller. These two locations are covered by the canopy so they're not accessible after the canopy is attached. So make sure that you get those in place first. Take the other two wide-headed screws and use those to attach the canopy onto the frame to the left and right sides of the flight controller. Take your time and make sure that everything lines up properly. And again, you're screwing into plastic, so screw slowly and have a feel of the tension of the screw going in. You can feel the tension through the screwdriver. Make sure that you don't over-tighten the screw if you do you're going to lose the plastic threading and they're not going to hold very tight. So just take your time and make sure that they're screwed in securely, but don't strip out the screw holes. As you can see here, I had a little bit of an issue with my last canopy screw. I didn't have it exactly where it was supposed to be. It was actually going down in between the plastic post and the rubber grommet instead of into the hole on top of the plastic post. Again, with these small items, take your time, make sure that everything is lined up properly, and then go ahead and screw everything down tight and secure. Now you're good to go. After that, you wanna go ahead and find your locations for where you're going to go ahead and secure your antenna wires. Make sure that you secure them in a spot that they're out of the way and you don't have the possibility of snagging them with your props. Now the last step of the build that you're not going to see in this video is plugging your motors into your flight controller. All you have to do is flip your quad upside down. Now take your time, just like with everything else on this build, you want to make sure that you take your time. These small components can be unforgiving. So you want to make sure that you do things right the first time because you won't get a second chance. Go ahead and use a pair of needle nose pliers, very small needle nose pliers, or even better, use a set of very small fine tweezers. These allow you to grab the small plugs from the motors and plug them securely into the flight controller. Go ahead and plug each one of the motors into the small sockets on the bottoms of the flight controller. After you finish this step, you're ready to get into beta flight and set everything up to your liking and get yourself up in the air. Thank you very much for watching this video. And again, if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out to the folks at FPV Crate or check out Beta FPV and their customer support page. Thanks again. We'll see you guys in the sky.